All right. Anyway, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 16 again. I know I say again because we started this, the very first lesson we were going to do was Proverbs 16 a long time ago. Where's the little stick thingies? Move stuff around. Can't find Proverbs chapter 16, we're going to go through verses 1 through, I think, 6 or something like that. A while since I looked at it. We're just kind of going to wing it here. Not really. We've got some follow-up verses and stuff like that to go through. Maybe put a little bit of work in that, but... Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it here in a second. And then we'll uh, open up with a little bit of prayer again, as usual. Kind of the same thing we always do. We'll get in and see what God's got for us again. God's got some awesome things for us. I'm going to try and get a little more structured as far as the days that I teach. You know, I'm going to do say, okay, this is what we're doing this day. Then the next Sunday we're going to, you know, just follow, just follow kind of almost like a small curriculum of about maybe six or eight weeks. Um, so hopefully I'll have that ready for you guys next week. Or the, the week, the next week that I teach anyway, the next week that I teach, because Darren will be teaching next week, so... Um, anyway, uh, I'll try and pull that together for you guys next time we get together, but um, I'm still hoping Nick shows up. I think he was pedaling a bike last time, right? Here. <clears throat> I think, wasn't he? I thought Arm already graduated. They might be, though. Mm -hmm. They usually do it on Saturdays. Hardly ever do it on Sundays. So... I don't know. We'll see. I don't think he's figured that out yet. Okay. Um, anyway, chapter 16, verse 1, and we're going to go down through 6 again. Yeah, I think so. So the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I think that's all we're going to do today. So, uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Um, again, Lord, thank you for um, each one of us that are here. Lord, help us, help us to learn something. Help me to learn something that I can take it and and, and show me something new, Lord, in this in this scripture as we go through it right here and right now, and um, and help me help me to make it a part of me. Um, maybe I can shed a little myself and put on a little more Christ, and the, that's that's kind of the that conf conforming to your image process, Lord. And I'm just asked that uh, if we can do that tonight, Lord, we'd be blessed and privileged and honored to to take that upon ourselves. And Lord, let the Spirit lead us and and your Word direct us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Spirit. <clears throat> Remember when I told you guys to look up tongue in, the, in Proverbs sometimes, you'll see it, uh, a lot of different things popping out, and especially, it's usually in the negative side, you know, the, it's usually a negative the side, um, um, you know, where it talks about, you know, we're not going to go over the tongue right now, and we're not really worried about that, because I'm kind of, kind of, I'm kind of, kind of. I'm sort of going to go back over the premise of why we're meeting on on Sunday nights, which is, I mean, it is, the name of the group is Recovery Through the Word. Um, <clears throat> and we all have things we need to recover from. I mean, some people, I was talking to my Aunt Linda today, and she was telling me about how um, her adopted son, threatened to kill two other students. No, I mean, serious. This kid's got some serious issues. You know, a lot of serious issues. He needs to recover from something. He really does. Somewhere deep down, underneath the layers upon layer upon layer, there's something. There's something going on there. <clears throat> and he needs to recover from it. Um, some people's needs are a little more immediate. Uh, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Those those are things that immediately need to be recovered from. You know, because if not, they're going to keep standing in your way. Some things are past that needs recovery from. Some things are present. You know, some things are, we're going to have to recover from things in the future. I, I, don't, I don't see anything but recovery through the Word as something, as, as just a tool, 
of, of, of adapting God's Word to our life so that we can, like, like we talked about in the past, you know, thinking as God thinks, so that we react the way God wants us to react, so that we, I mean, if, if our thoughts are, are consumed or saturated with His thoughts, then we begin to think differently, we begin to act differently, we react differently, <clears throat> And, and, and our attitude about everything changes. I, I remember when I had an immediate right now attitude like, I've got to have this thing done or I'm going to kill that person or I'm going to do whatever. Or, you know, Those were immediate right now reactions. They weren't anything that... But now that I have a, an eternal thought process, an eternal, at, an eternal attitude, it's like, you know what? The things of this world, they're going to pass away. Once that's actually enriched in your mind, you know what I'm saying? I mean, these are God's thoughts. I mean, nobody just comes out there in a world that's not in God's Word. I think the world's going to pass away and I'm in heaven and everything's going to be great. So why do these things matter so much in this life? You know, and, and people just don't generate that on their own, okay? They get it from somewhere. We, we get the, the truth about what God's plan is for all of mankind through His Word. It, begins, it began in Genesis. It ends... In, in, in Revelation. So we get the whole idea and the plan of what God's going to do with mankind right here. And once we begin to tap into that, we begin to understand it, then our attitude and our thought processes change. It changes about the small things to the large things. And, and the one thing uh, about this is once I began to have a, an eternal attitude and a mindset towards things, it really just didn't... It doesn't blow me away when things come down my road as much as it used to. You know, used to, somebody would come up to me and they'd say something. I'd want to kill them or fight them or do something stupid. You know, but now it's just like, man, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Because you don't have the same mindset or the same mind, which is Christ. You don't have the mind of Christ working in your life. And so you get, it sucks for you. I, I mean, I remember that, being that way and saying the same types of things they were saying and, and those, that kind of stuff. But it's because they don't have, they don't have the... The, the fortitude in God's word to rely on. You know, they, they don't have something that functional in their lives. They, the only function they have is, is reaction and, and action and pick up, a, pick up a bottle or pick up a joint or pick up, a, pick up whatever, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, it takes time to, to get through that process. I was uh, talking to a woman, or Rhonda today, actually, in church. And she said, this person at work, I'd like to, I'd so much like to see her in your group, man, because every time I see her, they're talking about going out and drinking and what they do. And, and she goes, you can tell that she's, or actually I said, I said, well, you can tell that she's not enjoying it anymore. She's past the age of enjoying that type of activity. It, it, it's become a burden, but it's the only thing that she knows. You're right. It's become a burden, but it's the only thing that she knows. She doesn't know any alternatives. Nobody's offering her any other alternatives. You know, nobody's saying, "Hey, come join me and and do this." You know, uh, wake and up really yeah, wake up feeling like, "Wow, I've succeeded today." You know, I've and maybe I've not succeeded, but but something's changed in my life that I feel better about. You know, and what what it comes to recovery is when you don't recover. I mean, let's 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 go to. I'm sorry. I, I hate. I'm not really getting off topic. I'm going to go through these verses. Let's, let's go to Romans uh, chapter eight, and and this is what we have on our on our flyers. And and Darren knows who I'm talking to. It's Romans chapter eight, and it's verse six. And this is this is why I put this on our flyers. This is why I I put it. This is what I believe real recovery. Is all right, and what it is not. When you're not recovering, you're one way. When you are recovering, you're another. This is one of the most cut and dried verses, and this verse blew me away. When I first read this verse, I had just got through. Well, I'd, I'd been a drug addict for years. Okay, I'd been a drug addict for ten, twelve years. Got out of that for a short amount of time. I was going to church and all that. I got saved while I was in rehab. Going through that, well, I go back to drinking and using drugs. Okay, I got out of that again on my own. Walked away from it, and now I'm I'm just drinking. I'm not I'm not okay. Which I considered that okay because I or I, I knew I was doing wrong in the Lord, but at least I wasn't doing dope every day and and running around with the crowds and all that kind of stuff. I considered myself my drinking the lowest level of of everything I'd ever done, so I thought I was doing pretty good. 
um, compared to everything else I'd done and was doing hard all the time, then this was this was moderate. But I still knew I was doing it. Okay, so so I gave that up too. Walked away from that. And I, basically, I said, I just need help. I, I actually, I hadn't even walked away from it yet. I, I spoke to somebody who was in this church, and I, and I was sitting there. I worked with him. I was sitting there on the ground, leaned up against a old file cabinet, just tears running down my face. I said, man, I need help. I need help. God does not want this for my life. I was a saved Christian, but I was out still drinking. You know, I didn't want drugs. I drinking. I, everything, everything had gone backwards for me. And actually, it hadn't, it hadn't that everything had gone backwards. It just, I hadn't been given the opportunity to take the steps forward that I needed in Christ. Okay? So I was still a mess. 25, 26 years old. Absolute disaster. Now, I think I was all closer to 27. Still, still drinking. Okay? I mean, I'd come home, the woman I was with would have a beer cold and ready for my in my hand before I even sit down. I didn't even want one sometimes. But since it was handed to me, that was the routine that we got into. I didn't want to be one of those guys that came home and had three or six pack of beers while their wife cooked dinner and you sit there and eat. I, did, I didn't really want to be that guy. I knew God had a greater purpose for me. Because for one, I was a saved Christian. I knew from the point I was saved at that little church in Arm, Kansas, that, that God had something for me. I knew the entire time that, that, I'd, that I'd been, because I wasn't raised in church, I knew the entire time that I was back to drugs and back to alcohol. God was tugging on my heart. God was tugging on my heart. I hadn't lost my salvation. couldn't lose my salvation. At least I believe that. Anyway, when I was, when I, so, I, so I'm leaning up against the file cabinet. I asked this guy, I said, man, I need some help. He gives me this guy's telephone number. He says, call him. I call him, and he says, yeah, sure, I'll meet with you. You know, pretty skeptical. He's pretty skeptical because there for a long time, man, a lot of people would say, yeah, I'll meet with you, and they'll show up, and they'll show up once, they'll show up twice, and they won't ever show up again. Okay, God will fix one thing in their life real quick, and then that's all they needed. That's all they really needed. They didn't really need that, actually. They need a lot more. They just didn't realize it. Still don't. So anyway, I meet with him, and he's like, all right, I see your attitude. Do this. Okay, I did that. Show up here. Okay, showed up there. Did this. He goes, you're serious. Okay, I'm going to give you somebody. You know, But that was the beginning process of me going, okay, God, I was broken. I needed recovery somehow. I needed whatever it was, and I was willing to do anything. And I didn't care who it was that taught me. And I'm telling you, I hate to say this, and Chuck, if you ever this, I love you to death, but you're kind of a funny-looking dude first time somebody meets you. You're like, what? Who's this character? Okay. He could have, he could have been a stand up comedian really I love the guy to death I love him to death He's, uh, anyway um, eventually he well, I was reading through some stuff and I read this read this verse in Romans chapter eight and it was verse six and it just blew me away it says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace there are, those are so those those two contradictions that that semicolon in there splits completely splits worlds apart right there it divides complete worlds when it comes to people because carnally minded carnal carnal is nothing but flesh carnal is flesh carnal is is the world carnal is nothing that has to do with anything spiritual carnal is if i want to sleep with that girl that that's the first thought that goes in my mind and that's what i'm thinking i'm carnally minded whatever it is anything that's not spiritual and out of this book and out of the word of god it's carnal I don't care if it's a nice novel. I don't care if it's a nice, fun children's book about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's still carnally minded. Okay? Because it's not out of this book. I'm not saying it's not proper for education so that people can be raised in society. I'm just saying that it's, if it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus and, and, and our Lord and God, it's carnal. So every thought that we have that's outside of this book is carnally minded. It really is. I mean, when you want to get down to it, it's carnally minded. So for us to be carnally minded, which is thinking of the things of the flesh, thinking of the things of, of this world, worrying about all that kind of stuff, when our mindset is to be... Now, I was talking about a mindset here. I'm not talking about every thought. Obviously, guys, we're, we're trying. But the mindset is carnally... Minded means mindset. This is our f major point of focus. To be carnally minded is death, period. I mean, it should be a period, but it's semicolon. Okay, but to be carnally minded is death. That just tells you the only result it's going to be coming from carnal, being carnally minded, and that's a spiritual death. That's an emotional death. That's a that's a. I mean, you can't get any more dead than that, other than to be buried in the ground. By then, it's too late. So that's one world. We get one world of carnal mind, 
and death, which is the way I thought my entire time up until I started to learn some things of spiritual things. And it says, but, which, which erases, I love the word but because it usually erases whatever the statement was before that. But, so now here's option two. And, and this is number world two. To be spiritually minded, spiritually minded, is life and peace. And, and I think, I mean, that's what everybody kind of really wants. I mean, a lot of people say, well, love, love is what you want. You know, I mean, how many songs have been written about love in this world? More than anybody can count, probably. Okay? And love is a powerful, powerful emotion. I mean, love is, I mean, we wouldn't have any of this word in front of us if it wasn't for the God's love for us. Okay? We wouldn't have any of it. We wouldn't have the author and the finisher of our patient. We wouldn't have Christ. We wouldn't have the plan for mankind. He loves us. So love is the most powerful thing probably in the universe. Okay? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Um, it always brings me back to that, so that Boston song, you know, peace of mind, peace of mind, I think is the name of the song. Okay. Everybody's searching for some peace. You know, I mean, how many times are they in turmoil about everything? And I think when you're in, when you're in a process of, of carnally minded or using drugs or drinking or, or dealing with relationships that are poor and not spiritual or, or you know, any, anything, when you're dealing with anything in the world, you don't have peace about it. I mean, you can gain peace about it through his word. I don't know what's up with this. There you go. Goofy sometimes. It's like I have complete block or something. Anyway, um, maybe the batteries, I don't know. Kobe knows how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Um, anyway, there's, you know, when you're, when you're searching, well, but anyway, when you deal with wor the world on the world's terms or life's terms, when you deal with the flesh on fleshly terms, there's no, there's no peace. There's the opposite of peace. There's, there's death. There's the opposite of life. There's death. And so the whole point of really basically the recovery through the word is for us to be, to lose that carnal mind so that we can no longer be dead in the people that we are. Because I know drugs bring death. I mean, when you, I mean, when you see people that are on methamphetamines for, for eight to ten weeks, man, they look like the walking dead. I mean, you want to, zombies are the funnest thing on the planet now. Everybody's a zo zombie killer or got zombie stuff or whatever. They talk about the walking dead. To me, that's conditioning. Of the, but anyway... The devil conditioning of the, the populace of, of, of the world. But anyway, um, yeah, essentially everybody that you walk up to that's not in Christ is, is a zombie. Because trust me, they're the walking dead. And, and they're living death every day because they don't have life. Because what's Christ say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. So, so guys, I, I know this. This is bringing... I mean, how old is this, are these words? I mean, they're eternal. For one, we know how long they last. These words, these words are, are what most people consider old and not applicable to today's day and age. I'm sorry, it's perfectly applicable to today's day and age. Everybody out there is a walking zombie. They're all dead. They're all dead in their selves. They're all dead in their own carnal flesh. And the only hope they have, what's that? Second, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second Timothy three really rips it a new one. It really does. It shows you what the world's about and how and how and how it's going to happen and how to deal with it. Really, I mean, yeah, it's it's awesome. Second Timothy and, and how the devil and, and the Antichrist and all these kind of things are going to are confounds and confuses. And I mean, Second Timothy is a good book. I mean, awesome book. We may have to cover that sometime here soon. But but anyway, but to be carnally minded is death, and be spiritually minded though. So it, God gives us an option. We can actually receive His truth. We can receive His his spirit, we can receive his mind to be spiritually minded or to be spiritually focused. Um, that's what provides us life and peace, and um, and you know that's that's really what uh, recovery is about. It's actually getting through a process, getting through one negative, getting over that that death portion in our life, whatever it is. If it's if it's deeply seated, it's going to take some time. If it's on the surface, it it, it may take you know it, we just it's just everybody's where they're at. God can take them where they're at. They can, they can say, you know what, he needs healing here. And, and if he just submits a little bit, I'll give him not only that, but so much more. 
you know, and and uh, a lot of people get wrapped up in the condemnation, you know, that they're that they're suffering in the the fact that they don't have peace, or maybe are they the shoulds in life? Um, well, I should be further along. As long as I've been in church, I should be here, or this person should be there. What you know? What no, no, you shouldn't, or you would. You would. I mean, don't get don't ever get caught up in the shoulds. In other words, I should be here by now. I'm this old. Oh my God! I should have these things in my life. Look at what everybody else. Wait, wait a minute. Now, if you should have, you would have. Um, you, you can't, what you're doing when you say should is you're putting limitations on 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 what God has done in your life, you know, and and what He's what He's doing in your life right now. I mean, if all those things should have come to pass, then then they would have come to pass. And I'm not saying they won't, but it's just right now we're exactly where God wants us. And, and so that's kind of what we're, what we're doing here is just kind of understanding what, getting away from that carnally minded process and getting into the spiritually minded process. I don't know if, I hope Nick's going to show up here. I don't need notes. I don't need notes. Anyway, uh, back to, back to uh, Proverbs chapter 16. I think I still have it marked here. Um, that's the reason I put that on there, but uh, it's because that's really what recovery is about. It's getting out of death and back into life again. And the only way to do that is to get out of that that focus of being carnally minded and into the into the realm of spiritual minded, where where God can work some things in our life. And once we focus on that, God, remember how we talked about that last time I got together is is when we those, those ifs and thens, right? In Proverbs chapter two, if, if we do these things, then we will receive. Um, this is the same. This is all part of that same process. It says the preparations in verse one. It says the preparations of the heart in man. And the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So, so it tells us that God prepares our hearts um, in man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So, God, so God is going to prepare our hearts in a way. Okay. Um, so that yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a promise, and, and that's so it, it shows us that our that our mind or that our that our heart is important to God. Okay, He, he prepares our hearts when when things happen negatively um, in time. You know, He does prepare our hearts for other things to come in the future. Um, verse 2, it says, All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Um, and and we, I think we talked about this briefly before. That, I mean, when, we, when we're talking about our ways, I can justify anything. You know, I can look at somebody and say, well, this person is that way or that way or that way. And, and it'd probably be almost believable. That or people just don't want to disagree with you. I'm not sure which, you know. Um, but the main thing is, is when they're talking about my ways, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. And when we're talking about all the ways of a man, it doesn't say all the ways of the Lord. It says all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. I might say, you know what, Scott, I don't like the way you do that. You know, But if Scott has already justified it in his own mind, in his own way, he says, hey, you know what, this is right for me. It doesn't have to be right for you. It's right for me. I used to have... One guy used to, I mean, he used to use that all the time. Well, what's not right for me doesn't mean it's not right for you or whatever, that liberal way of thinking of things, you know. Um, you know, I, I call it the California, you know, uh, what did I call it? I used to call it the, you know, something. I can't remember what it was now, the California something. It kind of rhymed. But it basically that liberal mind, what's, what's good for you might not be good for me, but I'm not going to say anything about what's good for you. You know, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, truth. Yeah, yeah. All things are relative. Nothing's absolute. Well, if I put it, I used to hear that all the time. Nothing's absolute. Everything's relative. Well, if I took a gun, pointed at your head, and pulled the trigger, and you blew your head off, you would absolutely be dead. Nothing relative about that. <laughs> you know. And so I said, you know, there are some absolutes in life. You might as well get used to thinking about them. So, um, anyway, uh, but anyway, this was uh, all the ways of a man are clean in his own in his own eyes. You know, we can justify any action that we have. Um, in the things that we do when we're talking about carnally minded. But the moment we get into God's Word and start understanding then we can no longer justify our actions when we know the truth of what God, uh, what God has revealed about those things that we're doing and we're saying and we're acting. Um, he's very definite about that. I say he is in general, general term. But um, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. And it says right there, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Um, 
we, we can justify anything we want to do. We can justify hurting people. We can justify hurting ourselves. We can justify helping people and what we consider helping ourselves. But I've seen a lot of people help people the wrong direction. You know, I had this one lady who says, man, I want to help her. I want to take her over here and do this with her and do that with her. And I was like, okay, what? Why? What, what, what is that? You're going to distract the person, but are you going to give them something that they can actually bank on, that they can live on? Give them something absolute. Um, the world doesn't like absolutes. They like relative because there's no responsibility when it comes to relative because it changes. It's relative. But absolutes are, are absolute. There's nothing we can do about that. And God weigheth the spirits, and that's the absolute point of it. Uh, no matter what we do in our own eyes, whatever we justify through our own thoughts, because that's how we do it, we justify things through our own thoughts, then it all of a sudden makes it okay. But God weighs the Spirit. So he knows, he knows exactly uh, where we're at and what we're doing, and, and uh, he knows the intent. Intent. Remember the preparations of the heart, of the heart in uh, man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord? He knows the intent. Um, but here's really where it gets where the change comes in. So we're talking about the preparations of the heart. Uh, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, and all the ways of man are clean in his own sides. And then it changes to but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Now in verse three is where the change starts taking place. It says in verse three, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established." All right. And I think I explained this before in, in a different way where it was talking about, um, I don't know if I used it, maybe I was talking about something else, but um, when we commit ourselves to something, it's kind of like, have you ever seen those people that, that say, you know what, for you know, twenty nine ninety five, I can give you this lesson and, and you will, um, if you do it five days a week, you know, you'll lose 50 pounds in you know, 60 days or something like that. Okay, it's probably going to work. If they commit themselves to it, right? And what they're doing is, is they're giving them information, and which is pretty general. You can pull it off any website, probably, you know. Um, but it's depend on on the appeal they put on it, you know, and whether people buy it or not. And they sell thousands of these things. I'm sure, probably millions of them. And when a person commits themselves to it, then it begins to change the way they're thinking about themselves. And and when they begin to see some change because of the of what they're actually engaged in, what they're committed to, and they begin to see some results, then you know, then they begin to think about other things that they want to change in their life, like eating habits and these things and those things, and, right? Because it, their thoughts begin to be get guided down a path a certain way. Their thoughts begin to get guided to to be di- guided a certain way. Um, and generally, the path's pretty broad at first, and then they and then they begin to narrow it as as they begin to restri- put things in their life that are different. Some of that's good, okay? But what they're doing is they're committing themselves to a work. They're saying, I'm going to do this for 60 days to see how much weight I can lose. Okay? Um, And then as they begin to see the changes and develop, then their thoughts become to follow those things. Um, That's one way to do it, okay? So what God tells us to do here is he tells us to commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thought shall be established. And that means every time I wake up in the morning, waking up is a work, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to thank God for something. I'm going to, as I brush my teeth, I'm going to thank God for something else or talk to God about something else. Every work that I do, when I do something at my job, I'm going to say, God, I'm doing this for you to give you honor so that my employer can be also honored. I'm going to do that. I mean, when we begin to, to shape our lives around committing our entire life and every aspect of our life to the Lord, Guys, our, our, our thoughts immediately follow. If I say, God, I'm going to give, I'm going to read your word every day for the next 10 days, and that may seem like a lot to somebody. It might seem like just a very little bit to somebody. But if I'm going to, God, I'm going to commit myself to read your word for the next 10 days, and you actually follow through with it, then you're actually, then pretty soon your thoughts are going to start changing. It's like, okay, now. Because why? Because God's word is a changing, it's a proactive. I mean, it just completely goes inside of you and changes who you are. Okay? Another, the basis of it is, and these are pretty, some pretty poor examples, but anyway, when you commit yourself and what you're doing to God, 
then your thoughts are going to be established not just around that commitment, but around that focus. Carnally minded is death. Spiritually minded is life and peace. When we commit our works or what we do, then our mindset will eventually follow that path. I mean, I know that whenever I came to them and said, I need help, I will do whatever I need to do. Just give me somebody. Give me something. I, I chose. To, I said, you know what, God, I will do whatever you want me to do. I don't care. I, I will just... I, I will meet with whoever you want me to meet with. I will go, I will jump up and down in a you know in a on a pogo stick for twenty you know whatever you want me to do. I'm going to do it. So I committed myself to it because I hated the place that I was in. I hated the death that I was in. I hated the fleshly death that I was in. And I wanted life and peace. And so I said, God, I'll do. I'm going to commit whatever, whatever. Just give me whatever. And you know what? As He did that, I decided to stay with it. Why? Because as soon as you do get some, commit yourself to God, He's going to give you something. Now for me, the longer I stayed on that path, the greater and broader my thoughts became when it came to be. And it says, I thoughts shall be established. And established is something that's, that's, I mean, for decades, for uh, forever, I'll be able to bank on that. So my thoughts shall be established. Now there's plenty of times I've wanted to react and say, you know what? I'm going to go kill that person. But because my thoughts were established in the Lord, I could say, Lord, I'd rather pray for this person. You know, your thoughts are established now. You, your, your changing begins to think from carnal over to spiritual. And that's, that's what, I mean, once they're established, I mean, I can't, I can't go back to using drugs and alcohol now if I, want, if I wanted to. I mean, I could try, but I'd be the most miserable sack there ever was. I mean, because my thoughts are established in the gospel. When I would see somebody, if I were to go to a liquor store, and somebody came out before I even made it in the store and was telling me about their problems, I'd be getting them here, even though my intention was going to the liquor store to buy liquor anyway. But I'd be, my intention would be, be to get them in this building in recovery in a, in a word on Sunday nights. Or show up on Wednesday, or show up whenever, man, I don't care. Let me, let me, you know, let's go over here. Don't worry about that alcohol for I mean, God will put something in my face anyway, but my thoughts are so established in Christ that I, I couldn't, I, I, don't, I don't even fathom how I could walk away from it. I don't, I don't. And if I could, I don't see how I could do it very long without just being torn apart. I mean, just tear you apart. I'll just tear you apart. I mean, I don't know if it's not, if it's a guilt, you know, therefore there, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But the moment I step out of, out of that, I mean, I'm still saved, but the moment I step out of being in Christ or abiding in Christ and His Word and His body and His Spirit, man, I, just, I would just be alone. I would just be alone again. The Christ that dwells in me is very reachable, is very personal. It's very real. And it's, to me, it's past the point of denial. I, will never, I can't ever go back. Anyway, number four, or verse four. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Now, um, I'm not going to go over this too much because that kind of it kind of jumps topics a little bit, but it really doesn't. And, I, and I'm not going to explain why today. But anyway, in verse 5 it says, For or everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Um, when it talks about the proud in heart, it, it goes very cleanly with verse 2 where it says all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. And when you look up pride in the Old Testament and you look up pride in Proverbs or, or just wherever, I mean, it, it seems that that is against God. Well, it just says right here, that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Guys, because God established all things... God is the creator of all things, ye even the wicked for the evil of day, or, or wicked for the day of evil. Um, we, we've got nothing. We've really got nothing to bring to the table when it comes to God. Um, he's, I mean, uh, tell, me, tell me what I can bring to God's table and say, look what I did, Lord. It's going to amount to nothing. When, talk, when Kobe talked about doing, you know, I count all things as dung, you know, in, in Philippians chapter 3. It's very much that. We've got nothing to bring to the table. All things are of God and for God and to God and through God. Um, it says in verse 6, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So when we're talking about 
finding peace, when we're talking about going through recovery, when we're talking about getting some life, getting some truth, um, that's, that's kind of where it falls into place. Let's go to uh, Luke, I think it's Luke chapter 11, let me look. I hope I'm not just flying off the Luke chapter 11, verse 41, I think, 40. Yeah, let's, let, I'm sorry, let's go back to uh, verse uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 34. And we're, we're talking about, where it talks about, you know, the things men see or the things men do or basically the pride of, the pride of, because we all understand in, in 1 John, you know, chapter 3 where it says, you know, uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You know, these are the things that, that cause men to sin. Um, and when it talks in in Luke chapter eleven verses thirty four, it kind of gives a, an idea about that uh, that light and darkness, that that death and that spiritual life that we were just kind of talking about. So this is verse thirty, and you notice there's two lights. Just keep an eye on that. There's two lights. The light of the body is the eye, and therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. In other words, when we're minded one direction, when we're focused and we're committed to one thing, then that light is single-minded. In other words, we're, we're not double-minded, we're not of two lights, but we're of one light. The whole body is also full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. So, so it's, not, it's not hard to turn, turn your head in one direction or another and find evil. Guys, it's, it's, it's all around you. It's all around you. So when it talks about, and this, and I actually have a, a, a little note here that says Romans 8, 6, which is what we just covered, being carnally minded versus spiritually minded. Um, when, when we're focused on what we need to focus on, and, 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 I, and I can't emphasize this enough times, when we're focused on God and focused on Christ and our eye is on the light, essentially, right? Our eye is on the single, the singleness of light. Our whole body is also full of light. In other words, everything is taken care of. I, remember that 360 degrees all the way around that where God will take care of us and take care of everything as long as we're focused on Him? That's, that's a very real and prevalent application. But when thine eye is evil, or we've turned away from that light, thy body is also full of darkness. I mean, have you ever just decided to go sin? And just go out. I am saying. I know it's, it's, not, it's not what you want me to do. Or you fell into it even just for a moment or two, and you're just like, Whew. I mean, it just seems like it overtook you. It, every every thought you had, and you did so what you would have normally done if you were doing what was right. I mean, it's just like when when sin when you allow sin in, just even for a brief a little bit, it seems like it overtakes you, doesn't it? I mean, it almost seems fast. It's like the fastest thing. Yeah, it's, it's fast. Talking about here, I mean, your body is full of darkness. It's just like instantaneous. You're just like, wow, I love it. I mean, from head to toe, it's like a different emotional state. It's like a different thought process goes through everything. It's like your body even goes through changes at that moment. There's Nick right there. I think. Anyway, it's like, it's like your whole body goes through changes all of a sudden, and it's just it's it's explosive. It is, yeah, it's him. Um, so we might go back up just a little bit here, just if that's okay, um, just to kind of cover some of that. But but it says in verse thirty five, take heed therefore that the light which is in the darkness. What's Yeah, no problem, no problem. So it says, Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. So now there it's obviously talking about two separate lights, okay? There's the light of, of evil, which we know that, you know, Satan is the, you know, the angel of light. <laughs> he comes as the angel of light from times. Um, but they're talking about there in that verse, they're talking about 
two specific lights. Take you dear for that the light which is in thee be not darkness. So it can be easily confused. We're not we're not in that state, obviously. Um, but when it talks about when we turn our head and thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness, man, it just happens instantaneous. It's it's just instant. It overtakes you. And doesn't mean we don't get out of that real quickly. And sometimes we might linger in it. I know a guy that's right now he got sucked up into a relationship with a woman that's that was while he was married that was unspiritual and she doesn't seem to you know she doesn't care about nothing and it took him out man he's so far gone now I don't know where he's where he's at or where he's going to be you know and that was our old pastor sorry I should I probably shouldn't put that on YouTube but anyway um, anyway yeah we'll edit that out but darkness will take you over. And if you allow it to continue to take you over, instead of stepping back into that where it says, you know, being carnally minded, let's go back to the spiritual mindedness for a minute. The moment we don't step back into that, dead, dead, death. What's it say? To be carnally minded is death. It's a killer. It's a killer. And we, and that's that's why I said the whole point of this group is so that we can get away from the carnal mind so that we can get those thoughts established, commit thy works unto thy ways, or commit thy works unto the Lord so that thy thoughts might be established. If we can get that transition to slowly take place in our life, you know, that little bit, little by little, precept, prime precept, line upon line, line upon line. If we can get that to happen, we're going to be all right. You know, eventually we're going to be all right. It's just going to take some time. But the whole point is to get that transition to start taking place. That we can get from that that eye of darkness over to the eye of light. That we can get that that justification of our own thoughts and our own ways, and get those works committed over to God's ways, and our thoughts are going to be greatly established. Um, one way to do that is to get into God's Word and to and to go through that with somebody. That's that's the that those 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 you know getting back to those first oracles, you know of God. Uh, the, man, that's got to get those things down. I really believe that those things, without those things, we're just kind of skimming over the top. We're just kind of skimming over the top. If you can get rooted, you know, which are those those first oracles, if you can get rooted there, um, the rest of it kind of kind of comes to you and it becomes a gravy after a while, because then it's then it's something that's really heavy duty and and you can start getting God will start getting you from the milk to that meat. But you've got to get established in those first oracles. What was that? When it was, it was yeah, the print. Oh, the, sorry, the first principles of the oracles of God. I, I knew I had it there, but um, getting that established is a major deal. Where's he at? At least he's here. Praise God. Anyway, so a question. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So you mean like you're you're about ready to just fall off the wagon? <laughs> Not that you want to, but you go. You almost don't care. The flesh is pulling you that direction, and 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 there's not much you can. Yeah, and you're just like, you know what? I'm just so frustrated. I don't even care right now. Yeah, one of those kinds of things. Those spots. That's where that's where it comes into play. Where uh, for for one. Got to get that rooted in establishment in God's word. Got to get that done. Um, I'm not saying, and, and trust me, the memorization verses and things like that. It sounds like a childish thing, but but those really really help. I mean, because when it says, you know, in all things, God will bring things to your remembrance. He'll bring a comforter. Um, you know, and let's check that out in in First Corinthians again. Um, and now if it was fears or those kind of things, which we covered that one day, right, remember? And, and there's more ways to cover that. There's more on that. What is it, First Corinthians and, uh, uh, what is it, chapter, what is it, chapter, where it talks about the great comforter, blah, 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 blah. or is it Second Corinthians? First Corinthians. Hold on a second. I think, it, I think you're right, it is Second I'll get sucked out. Yeah, it's got to be second because uh, uh, we're just talking about tongues and stuff like that. 
Ah, let me let me go back here. I'll just go back to the back. It'd be easier to find it. Comforter teaches. Uh, I'm sorry, it's John. Is it John 14? Wow, I was way off, John. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, it's in John. I don't know what I was thinking. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 14. I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, four, yeah, four, what I was going to focus on was uh, four, 1426. Yeah, so. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to thee. The main thing is is once we get taught and rooted and grounded in and, and don't get me wrong, it's going to happen where there's going to be times. You're talking about resisting temptation, you know, things like that. Um, a lot of those are just as simple as, you know, flee fornication. Resist, resist temptation and then the devil will flee from you. I'm not, I'm not saying that that will work, okay, unless you apply that. Okay, you can say those things, but I was caught in a situation, and I don't mind very well um, mentioning it here, but I was caught into a situation not long ago where I had to say, the Bible says, flee temptation, and you'll be delivered. So I got up and I walked away. It was that. It, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. It was hard, but, but I knew the road or the end result if I hadn't have. you know. And, and don't get me wrong. It, we'll know the end result, and we'll do stupid things. Because remember that with the moment we take our eye off the good light and into the bad light, all of a sudden it becomes a... Uh, I don't know. Any, any, all of a sudden, we're overtaken in that darkness. And so it's easier just to go the way of the darkness than it is to fall back into the light again. So the moment we do that, we need to pray, you know, and we need to say, okay, Lord, I, I don't care if you think I'm listening or not. I know you are, okay? Um, that's, where, that's where those first principles of the oracles of God really come into play. Because that's really what establishes you solidly in His Word, in His truth, that that getting back and that operating in the facts so that we can operate in faith, remember, instead of operating on our emotions and, and getting sucked into the, you know what I'm saying, getting sucked into the how we feel and I don't care and blah, blah, blah. All those things happen. They happen to us every day, okay? And and that I don't care attitude and that effort attitude, which I have an effort attitude, I used to quite a bit. You know, like effort, I don't care. You know, I don't care. Well, that's the person I don't care. This part of my life sucks, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's that everything is right in his own eyes. That's that justifying mind again. That's that getting away from, that's that carnal thinking, <laughs> which the result is death. You know, that's, that's kind of what we're establishing. So, so that effort attitude and those, you know, saying all those things, I don't care, this doesn't matter, this sucks. Those are all things that we're saying that are not of the Spirit. Those are all the things that we're saying that are not out of this book. But instead... If we're to say, okay, God, you know, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, you know, flee, to, you know, or flee, you know, flee whatever it is and resist temptation, and the devil will flee from you. Blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm not saying that everything that's being tempted by us is of the de is the devil's throwing in our face. Don't get me wrong. Some of that is. Some of it's not. Uh, some of it's just our own flesh, our own carnal mind, our own carnal way of thinking. Um, verse 6, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, guys, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, that's... John chapter 14 is an awesome... Actually, the book of John, period. But John chapter 14 is a solid, solid chapter. John chapter 15. Count how many times it says abide in that chapter. Okay? Do that sometime. That's the abide chapter which means that we reside. Abide means to reside, resolve, or, or habitate, or habit, you know, inhabit a position to abide in. That's by going through His Word, going through His Spirit. You know. But anyway, uh, that's those first principles too. Anyway, the whole, the whole, the whole deal is with, this, with this thing is to, to get reestablished into God's Word and to get our line of thinking and our way is committed unto Him so that we can have our thoughts established. Um, commit some time to learning. Commit some time to applying and some time to do what's right. And man, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow you away what, what God will do. And, uh, and I, I can tell Scott that, you know what, your countenance has changed somewhat. 
since you started hanging out. You're not as tense as you were, and I know you probably got stuff you got to deal with. Like I said, I see you once a week. I don't know. I mean, you might you might six days a week just be a complete maniac. I don't I, I don't think you are, and and even if other people do think you are, I don't think that. Um, you know, I, I, I know Christ is the author and finisher of your faith. And uh, regardless of what you go through on your own, you know, or, or when you're not around, um, I know that I believe, I believe by what I see and what I hear that you're a saved individual. And, and God's established his spirit within you. And if that's the case, then, then there's going to be some fruit out of that. He's going to get it one way or another. And I think that your attitude of whatever it is that is going on with you, I, I think that your attitude is good enough that God's going to really break some things free in your life, and, and it's going to be very uh, very liberating for you. Good enough? You, know, you should be further along? I guess that's the should. should be That's why I, I, I do it to myself. You, I, I do it to myself, too. I should All the time. be done with school. I should be blah, blah, blah. I should be, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it's it's it, it it's hard to get that mindset of because we see the standards that are in the world all the time, and we're like, you know what, this is this is how I should measure myself. This right, this is how I should measure myself. But there's other societies out there that that I mean, they're married at twelve and twelve and fifteen years old. I mean, just because that's their cultural way doesn't mean I mean, and so you know, don't get sucked into. I mean, don't get term term here. Get me wrong. We live in this culture, in this society, and this is what has established a lot of the ways that we uh, choose to live our lives. And it's not a bad one entirely. The 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 American way. It's not entirely bad. Okay, um, but the main thing is is to focus on what we're establishing in, in, in our spiritual walk with God because that's the eternal portion of it. We have to survive in this world. It's, the Bible says that we are pilgrims in a strange land and that's because we're only passing through for a short time. Um, the pilgrims that established themselves in the, where are they now? They're no longer pilgrims. They were residents. And, and, once, and, and here in this, in this world, we're only pilgrims. We're only here for a short time. Our real residency is with our Creator. And that's where we're going to be for eternity. And so um, and I'm not saying that's, you know, but that takes time to get that spiritual mindset. So we're going to focus on the abiding. We're going to focus on getting some of those thoughts established. And, and uh, you know, a lot of that just comes with, with learning God's Word step by step. And there is a step to it. God has a... It's just like, I'm going to finish up right after this statement. If, if you, uh, I mean, if you, if you get a car, man, you, you, you probably ought to look at the owner's manual every once in a while. If, you, if you've never checked the oil or done anything on a vehicle, you might want to check out how to do that if you plan on doing it yourself. This is, this is our operating manual for living because it takes us from death into life. This is our operating manual for living. And it's going to take a little while to learn step A and step B. God structured everything. It tells you, I created the heavens and the earth. I created the stars. I separated the night from day. He did everything in a sequence of steps. What's up, dude? You're cool. And, uh, and because he did all that, he has, a, he has a structure. God has a way of doing things. And we need to understand that that way is, you know, there is a plan. I mean, he set Christ here. He gave Christ, you know, Christ had 12 disciples. Those 12 disciples went out. Those, those gained disciples, they taught them. They taught them. They taught them. You know, when it says in Acts chapter 3, it says, you know, how am I supposed to know unless some man should guide me? You know, the word of God. He goes, do you even know what you're reading? He says, how can I unless somebody shows me? You know, I understand it, but what, what do I do with it? You know, and that's, that's the point. That's what, that's what we have here, so. Um, if you guys can get together, I know you guys plan on getting together. I would, I would, I would still encourage that. It really is, a, uh, really is a good. This is, I mean, this recovery through the word is a good hit. It's, it's a, good chance, you know, and and to get some guidance. And that's why I said I'm going to try and structure the, my next few, so that it's not so scattered. But like an set, you know, in between when Darren's doing his or whatever, but um, the basis of what we try and get our established so from away from our thoughts into God's thoughts so, so that he can change some things in our lives. Um, the recovery part is everybody has something to recover from. 
I don't care what it is, whether it's immediate, past, or new, or, or coming down the road, she's we've all got something. Yeah, she's cool. And uh, once we've got that, then uh, looks like BB guns. Pow, pow, pow. But uh, then God will start changing some things around. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and if you need to cut out, Scott, that's cool. I understand. Yeah, pray, okay, let's pray real quick. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you for uh, for today and for everybody that's here. Lord, I just uh, want to ask that uh, you bless each one of us and, and keep us, Lord. And, and I know that there's things going on in each of our lives, Lord. There isn't mine and everybody's here. And we just ask that you can intercede with some of that. Um, give, us, give us something else to operate on. Let us quit being carnally minded, Lord, and living in death and, and start understanding some things about you and, and getting some life and peace. And, and what do we do when it comes to the crunch time and we have to make a decision, Lord, and we just don't even care or don't even do whatever? We just say, you know what, God, tug on our heart and say, hey, remember, remember me. Remember my word. Remember what I told you. You know, if you're thinking this way, you're going to get death. Come to me and I'll give you life and peace. And, Lord, I just thank you for the life that you do offer and the peace that you do offer through your truth and just through your spirit, Lord, that comforter. It's, it's just awesome. The process is awesome, Lord, if we can ever tap into it and understand it. And uh, it is life-giving, and it gets us out of that living in death and, or that dying in death, I should say, Lord. Uh, it just helps out, uh, keep us focused, and, and get us back here again, Lord. And I just thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Scott, I didn't want to hold When you show up, encourage me. I don't know what I'm doing.